Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox coming to you today with the review for SWV and Escape, the Queens of R&B, season one, episode five. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, I'm about to leave this hotel, but I was like, let me do this video before, uh, before I get out of here so I can edit it, get it up to you guys as soon as I can. How y'all living? How y'all living? I'm living pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good, real west, well rested. Ready for the week, you guys. All right, so the show starts with Tamika and Tasha actually talking on the phone. You know, hey, girl, hey. Um, you know, it's time for us to talk. Uh, they both both agree on that, that they need to get together. It's been long enough. Um, apparently, Tasha did show up to that. Remember, they had a date that they were going to be performing at. Um, they weren't sure if Tasha was going to come. Well, Tasha did come, and she actually had some good energy. And uh, so, yeah, you know, the group was happy about that. Maybe we can keep up, you know, with this new energy that she has, you know, maybe we can finally, you know, come to an agreement on some things. So they agree when they speak on the phone that they're going to talk. Now we see Tasha, Tasha's at home, um, or I don't know if she's at home. She, I think she's at the studio actually. And um, she's working on her album. She says she's happy, the deal is signed. She just ready to sing her gospel for the Lord, y'all. And I was like, the Lord is not that pleased, Tasha. <laughs> not with the shit that happened this week. I was like, I know that girl's nerves got to be shot. They have to be shot with as much as they have been in social media. None of it positive. Most of it bad about Rocky. Tasha kind of looking like she one of the ones that's either the didn't know or didn't care uh, type of person. And... Yeah, it's been a mess, you know. Her latest is now they're in an open relationship. I was just like, like Ashley said, you can you can be in an open relationship singing gospel music. I mean, I guess you can, but it's just sort of like, how's this work? Like all of this bad publicity that she's had this week. I know Motown Gospel has to be, you know, rethinking this whole thing. They had absolutely no idea. But when she fixed her mouth to say open relationship, even if that is the case, which I don't believe, I think now we're at the point where we're trying to save face because of the mistresses, plural, because another one didn't surface. But, um, um, yeah, she, she should have... They should have came up with something else. Didn't I tell you that they just needed to come clean? Rocky had cheated. But instead, now it's open relationship. Like, girl, this doesn't help you. And what you trying to do, the image that you're trying to put forth, okay? How does that help? So, yeah, she has had a very bad week, okay? And um, I, I do feel, I feel, I feel bad for her. But I also feel like she and Rocky have put themselves in this spot. It didn't even have to be this. It didn't have to be this, you know? So anyway, while she's there at the, you know, working on the album, we see Tamika walk in. I was like, oh, we're going to do this talk now. I thought that that was probably going to come on the next episode. But I hear the next episode, Tasha going to show her ass. So um, this episode is the calm before the storm, I suppose. So um, Tamika walks in and it's real awkward. You know, of course, the allegations against Rocky. Rocky is there. Uh, how are we going to have this conversation with Rocky being there? But then Tasha don't make no moves or decisions without Rocky. So, of course, he's going to be there. But then can we even speak freely if Rocky is here? Um, yeah, all these things to try to figure out. Well, Rocky does leave the room, even though I'm sure Rocky is not too far away. And um, so they talk. I don't know if anything came of this conversation, but just the fact that they were able to make contact with each other, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. Cause you know, it was like, hey girl, you know, hey girl, um, how did we get here? Well, we don't know. Well, they do know, but we ain't got that kind of time, you guys. Um, they haven't spoken in three months. And for sisters that were super close by both accounts, you know, have had each other's back for years, or at least Tamika has had Tasha's back strong. And, um, you know, it, it was just the three musketeers, like when they dad left, it's interesting that they always bring up that father leaving. Um, I feel like there's more issues in the family because why does the dad come up? Why does he even come up at this point? He left when they were young. It's just been the three of them. Like why? So yeah, the dad is an unresolved issue, but anyway, you know, Tamika is just like, um, I did speak to your mother. 
Okay, you did? Yeah, I spoke to our mother and um, I did apologize for cursing in her house. Um, you know, what we agree on is we all need to take accountability for the things that we've said. You know, we both said some things. Tasha was like, yeah, yeah, you have said some things, but, you know, I don't hold on to it. I was like, girl, a lie don't care who tell it. What you been doing this whole, the whole show? You just said y'all ain't been able to talk. Okay. And everybody been trying to reach out to you. Phone numbers change and to tiny only one got it. And how, how are you making yourself available? Tamika doesn't say anything because I think Tamika is trying to be a little bit more non-argumentative in this conversation. So we go on and on about the family is everything and all of that. And, you know, they both agree that they, they need to make this right, you know, so that they can get back on the good foot, you know, mom and the two daughters and everything. But... You know, they do hug at the end of this conversation, but there was nothing that was discussed, at least not on camera, that we were able to see that really resolved anything. It was just more of a trying to break the ice between Tamika and Tasha not even speaking. At least now they're in the room. It's not like, un I'm not like ignoring you. It is still uncomfortable, but I'm not un ignoring you. You know, at least we can do that. But nothing, nothing, th that conversation was, was nothing. I do believe they love each other in their way. Um, but I also believe that Tasha is ride or die with Rocky, which is fine. That's your husband and everything, but your husband is driving your career into the ground. And he seems like such a narcissist that he doesn't even see it or care to see it. You know, he's right. They're wrong or candy, I should say is wrong. And you know, it's just more of that. So yeah, the conversation was had. Nothing came of it. Now, later on, we see Tamika. <clears throat> She's helping pick the um, uh, dancers for the show. Actually, all of the girls are going to be helping pick dancers for the show. Now, SWV, um, I haven't been to an S I haven't seen them live in concert, but we've seen enough of their sets to know that they don't have no big production like Escape does. Escape really does do a lot, okay? And I think we saw that with the versus battle. Escape was ready for a fucking concert, okay? SWV was like, oh, I thought we was doing versus. <laughs> so I'll give that to Escape. They definitely put on a full stage production. SWV doesn't. So SWV is like, well, why are we picking out the dancers, okay? They might have one or two homeboys back there in the background doing something, but nothing to the extent that Escape has. But, you know, we, we gonna make this be at least on the Escape's level. So let's pick the dancers. So they all there with the exception of Candy. And, uh, you know, we joke around of who's the best dancer in each group. You know, Taj is the best dancer out of SWV, which I would have thought would have been the case. Taj just seems like she's just more still kind of connected, younger acting and all of that than both Lily and Coco, okay? Lily self-proclaimed is the worst dancer in SWV. Um, and then an escapes in. Tamika was like, you know, I'm the dancer, baby. I was eight months pregnant one time performing, hitting them dance moves like nothing. Okay. And the worst dancer is not here today. <laughs> Candy, because you know, Candy had told us plenty of times, you know, I don't really have no rhythm. Candy got to struggle to get these dance moves, but Candy be doing it, y'all, but she, it don't come natural to her. <laughs> so anyway, the dancers, they all do their little audition and everything. They send the dancers out. The ladies compare notes, which numbers of the girls, you know, that they liked. And then they bring them back in and Tamika tells them, you know, so-and-so, 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 you guys stay behind. The rest of you, thank you. This doesn't mean that you're a bad uh, dancer or anything. This just, these are the ones that we wanted to work with. So thank you, everybody. So now we got the dancers out the way. Taj, you know, everybody's girl, like I said, she gets out there and dances and, you know, we laugh with them. She's vibing with them, you guys. Vibe with Taj and kick worming and everything. <laughs> now, on to outfits and choreography. Now, later on, we see Taj, Coco, and Lily. They meet out for hookahs and um, just shooting the shits. You know, what's up with the book? Oh, Sister Hot Pussy. Oh, she's doing just fine. You know, Lily says that it's hard work this audio book thing, you know, trying to be taken seriously as an author. And Coco was like, well, if anybody can do it, Lily can, because she nasty. She would like to make everybody think that I am, but she's the nasty one. I said, you could tell Lily nasty just from her voice. <laughs> that Lily looked like she had been through some things, child. <clears throat> 
after they finish shooting the shits or whatever, they talk about this set list um, organization that they've been trying to do with that guy, Steve. And of course, they're not agreeing on the order of the songs. Well, they're not agreeing on the ending. SWV, of course, wants to have week go last. Escape one's understanding to go last. Very much like the versus battle. Remember, SWV did week. It was this big old thing, fireworks and lights and shit. And then they was like, thank you, everybody. And then Escape was like, excuse us. We still have a song left to do. And they closed it out with understanding. Now, if I was the one that was to choose, definitely week would come after understanding. I don't even like understanding. I told you guys that's my least favorite Escape song. It sounds like a, a, a nursery rhyme to me. Okay, so... I wouldn't even want to hear understanding after escape. I mean, I would because I'm there, I'm watching and everything. But yeah, to me, we would be it. Escape doesn't feel that way. Okay. And I mean, they're entitled to feel that they the way that they want. But now we fighting over this last part. Lily feels like um, it's egos involved. And, you know, everybody is trying to put the other one down and, um, you know, they had, as SWV, they've had a well-oiled machine before, and it's going to be well-oiled after, and this little hiccup that they have, and it ain't even got to be nothing, really. We're going to be fighting over it. Um, yes, you had a well-oiled machine, but the whole idea was for you guys to come together collaboratively. So, even though I can understand what Lily is saying, you know, it's, it's going to have to be some damn give or take. It's two groups. So somebody's going to have to compromise. Why don't we let somebody headline and then the other person um, close out the show? That way, everybody, but see, I don't know the ins and outs of the music industry. Does that automatically mean the headliner gets paid more than the closer? Like, I don't know. Seems like some of it is politics. Some of it is just popularity. People's egos, like I said, involved. I'm really tired of seeing it. Like, I've had enough of the background, you know, the behind the scenes shit. Just give me the show. I don't give a fuck about all this. Because it makes you not like people that you thought that you've liked all these years. That's the one thing about reality shows. If they are done truthfully, um, <clears throat> and, and R&B Divas is a perfect example because... When we saw R&B Divas, we didn't like Tasha too much anymore. We definitely ain't felt Nikki Gilbert. We, you know, Shantae Moore gave us some runaround. You know, we was even not really sure about uh, Monifa sometimes. It was a lot, you know, uh, Chrisette Michelle. Like, you get to see the backgrounds and the behind the scenes, and then you just sort of be like, mm, too much information, <laughs> you know? They feel like just because they don't have millions of followers, that still doesn't mean that they're not relevant. So that is still the problem that's causing these two groups to clash. You know, we see Tiny, Tiny goes to meet with her um, her daughter, Neek Neek, okay? And um, Zanik and Tiny are still working on one of Zanik's projects. She has an album, I think that she just re recently released, or I think she just re released a song. I, well, I can't say release today. I think she released a song recently. I saw she had a party or something at the Trap Museum. But, um, you know, and little baby heiress, of course, is their sweetheart. You know, that girl is destined for greatness. Okay, triple threat. She seems like she can act. Okay, but she definitely can sing and she just has presence and she's adorable and all of that. So I'm sure T.I. and Tiny really hone that girl. She is going to go far. Those, those kids are talented. So Tiny is telling Neek Neek that, um, you know, they had a pretty good, that last show that they did, did pretty good. And Tasha was there and in good spirits. And, you know, so they hoping that that wave can continue. You know, Tiny was just like, you know, we don't be knowing if she, you know, Tiny was just like, we don't know if she gonna show up. You know, Tiny was just, <laughs> I can't get it, you guys. Tiny was just like, she don't, they don't never really know if Tasha is going to show up. And that's been a problem. We all, at least ought to be able to depend on you to show up for your damn group if they're performing somewhere. Candy had already told Tiny that she felt like Tasha uses them and uses her because Candy, you know, drops everything. Well, not drops everything, but makes the time in her schedule to put Escape first so that she can go and do these performances and everything. You know, all the people come to the concerts and see them. Tasha makes her money and then she drops them like a hot rock too, okay? Candy was like, I don't need the money. Tiny was like, neither do I. But, you know, they still like to do this 
but you know, it would be much easier and probably more fun if Tasha would get some act right. They've already put Tamika in place of Tasha. Like if Tasha don't show up, you know, one monkey ain't stopping no show. Tamika can sing the parts. Tamika say, yeah, they are kind of hard, but I, I, I can get them. I can get them. And that's all that matters. And I think really this show, if anything, has brought the fans closer to the group, the three of them, as opposed to Tasha. Like we clear on how the fourth member acts. We fine without her. Like, we thought we wanted her, but y'all didn't told us what it was. We didn't seen the real, real, so now we good. We good. We ain't never got to really see Tasha up there anymore. It's just too bad, you guys. Just wasted opportunity. It's, it's too bad. But that's where they are. Now, SWV, they don't really have nothing. If it's not them conflicting with um, Escape, their their story, they don't really have much. So we, we see Lily, for example, taking... Um, you know, sister hot puppy. This is her grand puppy. This is her daughter's puppy. Her daughter, I guess, is out of town. And so Lily has agreed to watch the puppy for a month. So she takes the puppy to a groomer, but it's like a do-it-yourself grooming facility. She's telling us again about how tough it's been as a single mother. I'm not trying to belittle the things that she says. It's just that we've heard her say it like a whole bunch of times. Sacrifice for her kids. You know, does she regret it? Yeah, there's definitely some regrets. It's bittersweet. She was able to provide for her family, but also she wasn't around as much as she would have liked to been, okay? That's probably the story of many families, many parents' lives. Is some of the were mothers, you know, the decisions that they have to make if they're trying to have a career, especially as a single mother. So, I mean, it's I get it. Now everybody is old and grown and, you know, it's, it's all good. So anyway, she's talking to her friend that's with her. The friend was like, so how are you guys settling on everything? And Lily was just like, well, I mean, I'm hoping that it works out. But for, to me, it feels like Escape thinks that they're better than SWV and it shouldn't be a competition. Now, as far as Lily is concerned, at least what she says here when she's talking to her friend is it doesn't matter who goes first and last and all of that. Okay, it just matters who puts on a good show. It matters that we put on a good show. But if it didn't matter, then you guys wouldn't be putting your foot down. See, and you can't let that foot go because you don't just want to concede to everything to escape. And really, I mean, I guess if you guys feel like you shouldn't, then yeah, still discussions to be had. But yeah, they, they had a standstill. I mean, the show going to go on, but it's going to be a lot before it does. Yeah, we've heard a lot about Coco. Coco has admitted that she can be a bitch at times. Um, we've seen them on different reality shows. So we know that Coco, if anybody is going to be the live wire, um, is going to be Coco. So <laughs> it's interesting that they have Coco going to do the finalize the set list with Candy and the guy Steve. Now, Coco was like, I don't even know Steve. This they people, okay? Steve, we thought, was the, the, the one that was handling the stage or whatever. Why he doing the set list, she don't know, okay? But she's there. So she already is sort of like not real open to this. But anyway, so Steve is trying to tell her the, the, the order of the songs. And Coco like, mm -mm, no, don't like that. Oh, why is it? This is sleepy. The whole thing is slow. Well, I mean, the most of you guys, I mean, not most of you guys, but a lot of the hits, especially for Escape, are slow. They have some fast songs, but, you know, and then SWV has some fast songs and some slow songs, but, you know. So, anyway, to me, I don't know why this has to be an argument. Really, the bottom line is who gonna close out the damn show, okay? The rest of all of that is just gravy. We just put it in order however we feel, and um, all that. But yeah, Coco is like, and you know, Candy is just like, <laughs> this is the real you. You know, all that stuff she's talking about, you know, that I'm not drama, we don't fight. Mm -mm, this is really her. So even with all that conversation, like I said, when we get to the end, what's going to go first? What's going to, you know, what's going to be the last songs for both of the groups? Somebody has to go last. Okay. Um, and Candy feels like they should do understanding and representing her group. SWV and Coco feels like it should be weak. And Coco was like, they not slick. See, they want to close the show so they can look like the headliners, even though we co-headlining. That's why I said, where's the compromise going to come? Okay, damn. Now, we see Candy and Tiny, they're in a truck um, and they are riding somewhere. We don't know at the time, but you know, they're just talking about the outfits. Um, 
And you guys, we've seen Escape's <laughs> outfits, and yes, they are quite uh, stripperish. You know, that's just their aesthetic. You know, they've had a lot of work done to their bodies, and they like to show it off and all of that. SWV ain't did all that, okay? They may have had a tummy tuck here or there, but them still some full-grown, full-size, you know, women. I ain't mad and not hating because I've gained 15 pounds in, in two months. So, like, you know, but that's just the reality. So... What es Escape likes and what SWV likes, two totally different things. You know, Tiny was just like, you know, we used to, you know, Tiny was just like, so, you know, Tiny was just like, well, uh, uh, I've seen uh, SWV's costumes and from what I gather, still can't do it. <laughs> you know, from what she gathers, um, they usually wear like the big jerseys and, you know, the, 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 um, um, combat boots and jeans and you know we used to wear all that too back in the 90s but it's 2023 so we look like 2023 and they look like a throwback act <laughs> okay yes swv could stand to change they look you know because i was just like we ain't still wearing like spray painted jackets and you know the shit the, the capri pants and all of that biker shorts and stuff that y'all be wearing like you could afford to step it up when we see taj and um, Coco in the other car and they got um, Jay with them. You know, oh, Jay has decided to stay in dental school because he was worried that he would regret it. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people also told him that he should stay. So, you know, like we said, you can be a singing dentist. And Coco's happy. Taj was like, yes, because I want you to do my veneers when you get finished. <laughs> Coco tells them how the set list going over was just a mess. Coco was just like, I, I, quite frankly, Coco ain't even sure she really liked them like that, like that. You know, Taj was like, we love you. But she was like, I don't even know about that. Okay. Like I signed on for this, but really she could take it or leave it. And I guess Candy and Tiny feel the same way. Like, I mean, if we can't agree on this closing out the show thing, then um, we ain't got to do it. So I guess everybody agrees in that sense. No, we didn't have six uh, episodes or we gonna have six episodes and y'all decide not to do the tour. I don't think so. Mona gonna be like, nah, 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 <laughs> nigga. Somebody gonna get on somebody's stage and sing something. Where they all actually are going is to meet with their designer, their costume designer. I forgot the guy's name, but it's him and his boyfriend who also assist him. And um, he actually is a stripper costume designer. He works well with a skate, you know, because they have stripper bodies. And so, you know, he get the shit, they, they figure out the colors and the shit that they want, and then he bring it to life. Um, and, you know, SWV had already said, Lily had already said, we not doing the Apollonia 6 look, you know, the lingerie and all of that. No, that's definitely not what SWV do. I don't even know if we could fit in them costumes, okay? So the designer has his job set out for him, cut out for him, because he's got to do something that both groups like. They're going to be sharing the stage. Like, all of that has to mesh. All of that has to come together. And, of course, all around the room is all stripper outfits, feathers, boa feathers, and rhinestones, and lime green, hot pink, and, you know, all the stripper fare. So Escape was like, ooh, kids in the candy store. And SWB was like, where the fuck is we going in this? So... They're joking around, you know, D Diana Ross, Tamika says, Diana Ross, you know, she has a separate stylist, so. And uh, Tasha was like, yeah, because she got her own stylist a while back. You know, her the stylist that Escape has just wasn't working for her, so she's much happier with her person. She wants sexy, form-filled fitting, but always classy. I was like, well, I don't know what the designer got in here, but I'm sure, you know, behind them bows, you know, maybe we come up with something. So... What color are we gonna wear? You know, oh, the blue is pretty. Oh, look at that. You know, Lily, I wanna wear all black. And Candy was just like, yeah, but we can't really be up on stage in all black. Okay, well, what about black and rhinestones? Yeah, I was sort of thinking white and rhinestones. Okay, so Escape wants white and silver, rhinestones or whatever. SWV wants black and silver, black and rhinestones. Okay, that should be easy enough to do. You know, we, we should be able to get that together. Okay, so we got that, right? They was like, uh, are you going to be able to do this in time? You know, the show is, I guess at this point, just a couple of weeks away. And um, he tells them, yeah, he got it. He got it. Just, you know, he, he takes their measurements and 
he's going to do his part. So after that, they're talking. And again, the set list conversation comes up, who is closing the show? What I really wish they would have done is there's a way to quantify followers into dollars or into sales and how many followers, because there are companies that actually send that kind of shit to me. So I know they exist that actually is able to put it into numbers so people can really see what influence somebody has over a group of people, you know, and how that relates, correlates with your followers and all of that. You know, they needed a marketing person that could explain that because SWV, I, I will agree, I'm very much old school like SWV. I already know they not as connected on social media you know, so they don't have as many followers. They don't even have a million followers between the three of them. Candy and Tiny, millions of followers just between the two of them, you know. And so that is the problem. SWV can't see it because they don't understand that part of social media and the, you know, the, the strength of the influencer. So Candy sitting here trying to explain that to them. First of all, we don't have that kind of time. Candy might not even be the one to put that into words. They need a person that can explain that to them. So SWV feels like that doesn't make a difference. Well, it does make a difference. The question is how much difference does it make? SWV has sold way more um, albums than Escape has. So that is something that shouldn't just be thrown away or thrown to the side. That needs to be figured into the to everything as well. So they're talking, you know, Lily, I don't do this Hollywood shit. You know, I ain't got to do this and all of that. And it's just like, of course, Escape is just like, it's not Hollywood shit. We telling you what it is. You guys don't know because you're not active on social media like that. Lily was like, y'all disrespect us and talk about us, you know, because we don't have millions of followers and have to have a piano in our in our um, dressing room. And they was like, what? Because Tamika had told them that. <laughs> it might be one of Tamika's white lies, y'all. <laughs> but Tiny was like, with all due respect, Escape has a bigger production than SWV. Like they don't do the things that we do. You know, we have LED screens all filling our stage. You know, we have props. We have a lot of dancers. We choreography. We up and down on stages and walking the stage and doing all of this. Like, they give a full show. SWV just gets up there and sings. And, I mean, at the end of the day, that maybe that's what the SWV fans want. Escape wants to give more of a J. Lowesque type of performance. <clears throat> you know, Lily. And Coco are just basically like, fuck this. We, we ain't got to do it. We really ain't got to do this. And so Tamika was just like, oh, so what are you saying? You know, I'm, I'm just saying like, we ain't, forget it. If it's going to be all this, we can't even get past the damn set list. And, you know, so Tamika was like, so you saying that the sisterhood is gone? She was like, honey, the sisterhood been gone. Okay. Because we, we can't agree on anything. Tamika tells her that she's being childish. Because Coco is finally to the point where it's like, you know what, why don't y'all do y'all show, we do our show, and let that be that. Let's not try to come up there and share the stage and bring the songs back and forth between the two groups and all of that. And Tamika was like, but we were supposed to be doing this collaboratively. And she was just like, I know, but you see what the collaboration is getting us. Coco was like, I don't care, this is stupid. Lily was like, this stupid as shit I'd have never had to do. And Tasha was just like, I, I ain't signed up for this. The perfect excuse for Tasha. One more reason where she can just kind of dip out. Like, y'all got too much drama. Girl, you've been in drama for 30 years. You've been in a damn group. This shouldn't just be a walk in the park. <laughs> when do you guys get along well and agree on everything? So she was just like, can we just get through one night, please? Yeah, let's, let's just try to get through one night at this point. So I don't know how that meeting ended because they didn't show us. But what we do see as a closeout on the show is Escape decides to all get together. Tiny was just like, we got to get to the nitty gritty. They've, Escape has found out some information. One of the promoters dropped a bomb on us, honey, and they came with receipts. And you know I love a receipt. What is happening now? So the four girls get together, pleasant enough. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. How you doing? How you doing? Okay, we sit down. And um, they get started. Long story short, they found out that Rocky been getting kickbacks from them performing for a certain promoter, okay? And she was just like, wait a minute, what? 
Rocky hasn't been getting no money. And they were like, yes, he has. And she was like, no, he hasn't. I said, girl, maybe you don't know that Rocky been getting kickbacks, but he has. Tamika was like, well, we talked to the promoter for a certain show that we did. And he told us that Rocky told him that as long as we perform, that Rocky was getting money for us to perform. So then, you know, Tasha's denying it. That's not true, you know. And they were like, well, we got the text messages. Oh, you guys gonna believe some text messages? They was like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hold on, we gonna have a business meeting right now. Tamika then made copies of everything for everybody to see, so she distributes them. And she was just like, so y'all believe these text messages? And can't, they was like, the man ain't got no reason to lie. It's say right there. Rocky got $10,000 already. He already told uh, Tasha that. But also, could the old boy send him 20000 more, you know, with the agreement that Latasha is going to get the girls to do whatever she want them to do, which is to perform, okay? So, all this on the hush-hush, supposedly, Rocky was telling Tasha, either, like I said, either Tasha don't know or Tasha is acting like she don't know and she is taking up for Rocky. It's hard to tell sometimes with Tasha. I feel like he does things and she don't always know what he's doing, okay? But forever gonna have his back. So she was just like, so y'all believe these text messages? And Candy was just like, well, that's Rocky's number. And she was like, but I ain't steal no money. And she said, but you guys are one. Because Candy was like, we shouldn't have to worry about money. If there's money going out from our group, then we should know about every money that's crossing hands in this group. Okay, Tasha's still saying she didn't know nothing about it. And they said, it says right there in the text messages that he was talking to you about it. So can and so Tasha was just like, okay, bet. So she pulled out her phone and she calls Rocky. And um, that's how the show ends. <sighs> you know, Rocky is just going to deny it. And we don't have the time to be sitting here and looking at canceled checks or cash, you know, transfers, money wire transfers and all that. We don't have the time to do that on the show. But like they said, why is this promoter, why would he lie to them? He's telling them we didn't send this man $30,000. I said, boy, that's the, that's the magic number with the Scott sub, the Bivens Scots, 30,000, okay? Um, yeah, so next week is the finale. I think we get a couple of weeks off and then um, Real Housewives of Atlanta will be back. So <clears throat> yeah. Did you have you guys enjoyed the show this season? It really has been an eye opener and kind of uh, disappointing when it comes to Latasha. But hey, like I said, one monkey don't stop no show. All right, you guys, let me get on off of here. I'm going to be leaving the hotel soon. Just wanted to get this done. Make sure that you thumbs up the video, comment and subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, I'm It's Rocks. The channel is It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rock Stars. Bye.